hello, ladies and gentlemen of the interwebs. Uh, what small fan base we may or may not have. Uh, this is episode 8 of the Getsuga Talk Show. Uh, I'm here with Andrew. Welcome back, everybody. Our buddy Chris bailed on us last minute again. It's kind of becoming a trend. Slightly getting annoyed by him, but it is what it is. We'll get through it. Uh, we tried to promise you a full-length episode. We should at least have an hour and a half, if not maybe two, if we can really push it. So today will be a big old amalgam of pretty much everything that we have planned to talk about and maybe our weekly update or something because there's just not a whole lot to it's just harder to fill the time with the two of us so we're gonna do what we can that all being said uh let's get going we had two possible subjects which one do you want to talk about more be honest <laughs> probably the recreators okay so i had him watch it i don't know if chris even got around to watching it but no, uh we didn't as of the last time I had talked to him previously. Doesn't surprise me. So there is an anime from two years ago, I believe, called Recreators, and the basis of it is it's an isekai, you know, whole other world type genre, but instead of uh, going to another world, the characters come to our world. We're not going to go like too much into depth about that, but I wanted to do like our, like, if we could summon someone, who would it be, who would win, whatever, you know? Um... Mm -hmm. This is kind of fun because you have J Stars coming out. Is that what it's called? That new one, the yeah, the Shonen. Oh, I forget what it's called. Jump you know, Start or something. Like Jump that? Stars. I think it's Jump Stars because it's Shonen yeah. Jump Stars. Yeah, that game's coming out, so maybe we could have a little like who would actually win. I think we have to knock a couple of people out like right away. There's no way Naruto is gonna win. Sasuke can't win. You know, maybe teamed up they stand a chance. But I guess it's, like, relative powers, right? Because even in, like, the, uh... Even in the show, some of the main characters weren't exactly what I would call world-enders. Yeah, but they were able to beat world-ending type characters just because of, like, the scaling, I guess, would be the best way to put that. Well, you gotta remember, the characters that came into the world and recreators, their powers were limited to what people could actually believe could happen in their world, for one. Yeah. So... So I guess anyone really has an argument then. Yeah. Um, but let's be honest. Three characters that would prob probably automatically end up in this discussion automatically. Goku. Goku. Saitama from uh, One Punch Man. Saitama from One Punch Man. Probably Ichigo. I'm not... Eh, it's I'm, arguable. It's arguable. Because the issue with Ichigo is like... I feel like most of his fights weren't even like... I don't know. I don't know how to describe it because I, I just don't... I can't imagine how he would match up with people, right? True. Because Saitama is debatably just as fast, right? Uh, Goku, debatably just as fast, and that's like half of Ichigo's power. And he has soul pressure, but I don't think soul pressure is really going to affect those two people in particular. So it's like, what can he... I don't think he has a real edge over them. So I think he'd get beat pretty early, to be honest. Yeah. But I he think... also has a knack for coming out from behind. Yeah, but that's every shonen main character. Exactly. Except Saitama. He doesn't have to. He's stupidly powerful. So I think if we're if we're taking that into account, I actually think Naruto would stand a good chance. Because you have the free bullshit, get out of jail free card of substitution jutsu. Oh god, how many or, times he uses that? Or just a clone being passed off as real for a moment, you know? Yeah. So I think that stands its own point to be argued, I guess. Um I don't think Natsu would do that well. I think Natsu would probably get a shit shoved in unless he was to go dragon or dragon demon drive mode. or demon. demon mode. Yeah. Yeah. He'd have to do one of the two to even stand a chance. Kirito's getting the shit shoved in the wrong way. <laughs> uh, I think Luffy could do okay, but I still don't think he can match up to the others. Well, again, all encompassing with the fact that it has to be believable by the people that live there. Yeah. That being said, I think my man All Might's about to come in and put up a fight. I oh, want to see him shit. versus Saitama. I think that's like the dream matchup, seeing those two fight at like peak power. Like young All Might yeah. from the movie? That'd be fun as hell to see. Oh, shit. That would be overpowered as fuck. He's like easily on the same tier with Saitama for just sheer power. So let's, let's break it down to a much lower scale and just seeing like really cool like just fights in general. I would love to see Rurouni Kenshin versus, like, another good swordsman. Like, uh, have you seen Fate, right? Have yeah. you seen Unlimited Blade Works? Yes. You know the fake assassin that was summoned? That that swordsman? I want to see him versus Rurouni Kenshin. That'd be really cool. Just, like, a fun fight to watch. 
Definitely. I think there'd be like a lot of really fun like low tier fights. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Because the high tier is just gonna be fucking ridiculous. People are just gonna be blowing each other up all day. They're literally you know? gonna have to do what they did with all tier to keep them from literally destroying half the fucking planet. Yeah. I just, I can't even imagine who would win. You know, if if I was being totally honest, I think Saitama just wins because his whole trope is that he literally beats everyone in one punch. Well. Yeah, but he's never. We have in the anime. We have not seen him fight anybody seriously, even. But as soon as he goes serious, he wins. Yeah. So it's like, all right, you know. Um, I think another fun matchup could be like, hmm, maybe like Airs of Scarlet from Fairy Tale versus Bakugo. That could be a fun one to watch. Oh shit! <laughs> Indeed, that would be. A- but she's also more of a swords woman in her own right. Yeah, and we I, I think that'd be just a fun fight to watch in general. Because, yeah, she has magic and stuff, but Bakugo also makes fucking explosions and shit. So I think it'd just yeah. be a fun fight. Because we know that Bakugo kind of has, like, that Goku complex where he's just, like, a really good natural fighter. Oh, you yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he's just really good at fighting. And Ares is supposed to be, like, the fucking bullshit OP swords woman from oh, Fairy Tale. Fuck. She always pulls out some random uniform and kicks some ass. So I think that'd be really fun to watch. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, Erza would walk all over Kirito. <laughs> Kirito's just a pushover. What is he doing in this? Nothing. Uh, what the fuck is he ever going to do? I'm sorry. If he got summoned to our world, you, you got to remember, there's two different versions of him. There's the version of him in the game world. Then there's just the normal, everyday Well, Kirito. we would have to give him the benefit of the doubt and give him game world Kirito. But, like, okay, so we have this photo in, the, in this room. And, like, looking at everyone in this fight, there's only two people that I think, or maybe three, that could keep up with each other. Yeah. Like, Kirito's getting his shit kicked in by everybody. Uh-huh. I think Natsu's getting his shit kicked in by everybody. Well, uh, what's I, the girl's name from Kill a Kill? I forget her name. Oh. Uh, whatever her name is. I still think she's Rukio getting... Rukio or something? I don't remember. She's going to get her shit shoved in. Because, like, what does she really do? You know what I mean? She's... Kind of fast and sort can of, cut clothes of. open, which means nothing to anyone. Like... Nobody She's else's not doing powers, shit. they're controlled by their clothing, yeah. so... Yeah. And, like, as much as I love her... What the fuck's her name? I can't remember. Uh, Mikasa? Yeah, as much as I love Mikasa, she's gonna get her fucking shit shoved in, too. If she fights anybody other than a swords person. She could fight Kirito. And wreck his shit. And I could see her putting up a fight against uh, Ed. But that's it. Um, yeah. Everyone else, I just think she's getting fucked. Oh, and, uh... The chick from Kill a Kill, but like, I mean, Ichigo, One Punch Man, Goku, and Naruto, and I don't think Luffy. He's in the top left. Oh yeah. I don't think Luffy's putting up in that fight, man. I really don't think he stands a chance. He's done some he, pretty stupidly crazy shit. He can't get close to any of those guys. Speed wise, no, but any of his hits contact, I guarantee you, he'll. Yeah, do but something. Naruto and Goku can both fight from a distance. I will say I think he has the best chance against Saitama, but I still think Saitama's better than everybody. Uh, Because Luffy's made of rubber, he has a lot of impact resistance, and we've seen him, like, take a lot of hits, but he still takes damage from those hits, you know what I mean? So I just see him getting fucking whooped eventually. So so let's do, like, the low tier on here, right? So we have Mikasa, we have Kirito, we have Ed, and we have whatever the fuck her name is from Kill a Kill. Maybe I'll still consider not too low tier. I don't think he just stands a chance against most of them. Like, well, not I'd consider him more of a mid tier fighter though, because most standard fighters won't stand a chance against him. You've got to remember he has. But I close... think Ed could beat him though. Ed and him would be about dead even, only for the sheer fact that they're both close range. And I think fighters. Luffy could beat him. Yeah, that have distance abilities. I, I could guess and say mid tier out of that group, Luffy and Natsu, <laughs> but everyone else is just. Unfortunately, low tier. But here's what I think. Kirito, I think, loses to pretty much anyone on that low tier list. It's just the reality of it. Uh I think Mikasa beats Ed, and Mikasa beats Kirito, but she loses to Kill a Kill because the sword's good at cutting clothes, and she cuts off the gear, and then Mikasa loses, like, all of her abilities. Right? Then again, as a kid, she was able to beat adults with nothing but a hunting knife. I'm not saying that's not true, but I think a big part of Mikasa's current abilities and, like, how we view her is because of her gear. So True, but she's also received military training. Yeah. But I still think, well, at that point, she's going to have 
the swords, but they're not going to be able to do anything, really, because the swords are gas-powered. Well, they're still swords, so you can use them like a normal but sword. But I think the kill-a-kill sword's still sharper. Uh, so I'm saying, like, I think she would just break off the swords and win a, a battle of attrition, because as soon as she loses her gear, she loses all of her mobility. True. And, and the kill-a-kill chick can still fly around and do stuff. Yeah. And then I think kill-a-kill chick loses to everyone else, though. I don't, except, she, I think she still beats Kirito. Well, I, don't, I still just don't know what Kirito's going to do to anyone. But there are so many other worlds, so many other characters that have the possibility for coming out in this. Because I mean, I'm not. I'm just like we're just talking about. What's we on had that a chart. freaking character from a dating sim show up in Recreators. Yeah, but they had to like give her powers to make her fight. True, but so, at the same time, that was so. <laughs> it was funny as shit, though, right? <laughs> I still think my chick who could like speak things into existence and lie things. She was overpowered. As oh, fuck. best character in the whole show. Magane. Oh yeah. shit. On top of the fact, her dark ass personality. She was fun. I enjoyed that character oh, a lot. Fuck. I guess we throw Airs in the mix. I think Airs was the other like mid tier character on that list right there. Yeah. I'm just trying. To, I'm still talking about that list. Yeah. So, I think out of the low tiers, I genuinely think Mikasa and Ed would be like the top two. Kirito's shit tier, and then Naruto and I, I think Naruto has a chance because if we're talking about what could be realistic. Yeah. I think One Punch Man would still be able to one because that's his whole thing. Yeah. But Naruto, comparatively, his powers are more realistic, right? Because they're not world-ending abilities like Goku. Yeah, no. So, I think unless Goku goes like Super Saiyan God or Super uh, Ultra Instinct, I think he can lose to pretty much Naruto or Saitama. To be honest, he tends to play around a little bit too much at the beginning of fights. Yeah. Naruto tends to go in for gold. He doesn't tend to play around very much. Yeah, it depends on like what stage we're talking about these people, right? Because I don't think Naruto, like... Oh, teenage Naruto? Not a fucking chance. Yeah, like, before he becomes... Hokage? Yeah, I think he can get whooped by pretty much anyone. Like, before that final arc, right? Yeah. But I think after that, it's really hard, especially if he keeps any of his sage powers that he got from... Well, uh, on top the of the fact, baths. if we're talking about if we're talking about Hokage Naruto, he's already been through a major war, probably several other small. He's fought like but, three gods. Yeah, and relatively one got his shit fucked up, but one. Yeah. So, he, but that tends to be. But Saitama in the manga fights the actual god of his world, like yeah. the one true god. Like you know, so I think Saitama's still coming out on top for me across the board. But I don't... I think it'd be a fun-ass fucking fight, though. Oh, it'd be entertaining because, beyond all of To be honest, they'd all just be making jokes the whole time. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, Goku, Saitama, and Naruto are all just, like, comedy-esque characters. They but like to joke and have There's fun. also something that we're not taking into consideration. All of those characters are heroes. Yeah. Unless one of them becomes corrupted or something. Well, that's what happened in the show. Yes. Right, as they get corrupted by somebody, and it's possible. We're just talking about what would happen if they fought. That's all. That's all the oh. point of this is. We're not building our possible, you know, landscape here. Yeah, but that's... Although, if we were, it's... let's let's create equals for every character in that show, right? Okay. So, uh... let's go down the board. We have the main character, Alice... No, 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 that wasn't her. Uh, what's her name? The red-headed chick. You have your notes right there. Oh, yeah. Look at it. <laughs> the red-headed chick. Uh, Setsun, no, that's not her at no, all. That's not Celestia. Her. Celestia, okay. So she was a part of a really, really big anime, right? Like, that yeah. was, like, her whole thing. She was a part of the biggest anime of the year, whatever. Yeah. So who would be the equivalent? Would it be Deku? Oh, shit. Because I think that's still one of the biggest anime, like, of this year. Because One Punch yeah. Man hasn't had a new season in a while. No, no, no. Bleach is done, Naruto's done. Uh, Maybe DBZ, but I really doubt it. Yeah. But... Also, the the villain in the story had to literally go back to her own world to find something that would fight her off. I got you. We're gonna get there. Okay. Yeah. I'm just trying to say, like, what's what's the equivalent, right? Uh, if you had to pick someone out of like recent anime, like maybe the past year or two, who's just been fucking enormous, I think it's Deku. I think you have to go Deku. Uh, huh? My hero Aka is just too big. Oh gosh, yes. All right, so our main protagonist now is Deku. Okay, so yeah. who who's the next one? The uh, video game character, right? Meteora. Me Meteora. She's a wizard. Yeah, she comes out of a video game. Yeah. Right. So she's a huge, huge video game character. Yeah. Uh, she's a huge influential NPC. Um, what are some of the biggest games of the year? Past couple of years. Uh, Think RPGs. So we have Red Dead Redemption Two, yeah. God of War. 
easily got a four. Um, oh shit. Um, what are some other ones? I know there's been a couple of big ones. Technically, Kingdom Hearts is not out yet. Yeah, it's not out yet. But in previous years, that would have been one of the largest. Do we have to do JRPGs? Because technically, it was a JRPG character. Because if that's the case, it's Nino Kuni. It has to be Nino Kuni. It's the only big uh, JRPG in the past couple of years. You'd be the more knowledgeable at that. I haven't actually had the pleasure to play that yet. Either of them, first or the second. Let's say Red Dead Redemption 2. Let's just pick that. Have you played right. any of it? Yeah. Okay. What is the name of the, the the leader of the group? Not the main character, but like the leader of his group. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, I know who you're talking about. I can't remember his name. Google it real quick. <laughs> Whatever. That's our choice for the equivalent of Meteora, okay? Okay. <laughs> uh, who else? Uh, Mamika shows up. The magical slayer, magical girl. I think you have to go with some good old fucking uh, Sailor Moon. Sailor Moon? I was thinking Sailor Moon, but you could go Madoka Magica. Which is probably... Would you say Madoka? That's more... That's more recent. Okay. Large so would Madoka magic. be the one to come out? Probably. She's okay. a main character. She believes in everybody's ultimate path or whatever. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Uh, who else do we have? Do, 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 do. Alistaria, which was the warrior princess chick. Who's a good character who got corrupted? I think if I had to pick somebody who's likely to fit that trope, it'd be Goku. I think Goku is the m- most easily manipulated out of like any big anime character that I can think of, and oh. he's pretty recent. Yeah, because that's what happens with Alistaria. Yeah, but at the same time, eh, I can't really relate her to him. He enjoys fighting. He enjoys the idea of there being stronger people to always. I'm fight. just saying, like. I'm just fitting that that's that trope, right? True. They were okay. from a big. I think it was a big movie series at the time, though. No, it was another really famous TV, but it did have a couple of movie series. Gotcha. Like none of these were small time characters. These were all stupidly well known characters. You didn't get the Mecha Kid on here. Oh, there he is. Yeah, he's you know, all right. Man. So, I do think Goku can fit that. Who else would you pick though? If you had to pick someone who uh, got corrupted easily. Corrupted Ichigo, dude. maybe, but he's too old, I think, yeah. age wise. But I could see him getting corrupted because he thinks he's fighting to like protect his world. Well, if we're going off relatively recent, in memory, the most easily corruptible character was probably Sasuke. Let's be honest. He might have had a chance of starting off on the right path, but he quickly went to the dark side quite rapidly. I don't. Sasuke is so annoying. <laughs> I didn't say he wasn't and annoying. To be fair, Sasuke has been irrelevant for a couple years. I don't count Boruto. Alright, right, fine, 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 fine. Alright, uh, another character that he was easily corrupted. Yeah. I still think Goku, man. Maybe Luffy. Luffy's fucking gullible enough. God, he's dumb. There's a reason he has a ship of relatively competent <laughs> crewmates, because he's dumb. Alright, I think I'm gonna go Luffy. Easily corruptible. Yeah. He really doesn't like fighting. He just wants the adventure. Yeah. Right? So I think that kind of fits. So we'll go yeah. we'll go Luffy. Uh hold on. Let's do you have a pen? I had one. Mine's in the kitchen. I'll be right back. I got one in my bag. Just okay. right there. I was gonna say we should write down who we've been saying, okay? Because we need to fight our cast and who would win. Uh alright, so let's do the giant mech driver. I can't think I guess you have to go like uh Gurren Lagan. Either that or like Gundam Seed hasn't been relevant for shit. No, yeah, it's been too long. I think Gurren Lagann's like the biggest mech show in the past five years. I think you have to go Gurren Lagann. Probably. Lagann. All right, so write them down. Just write the equivalents, right? So for Celestia, who did we say? Deku? Yeah. So we have Deku. All right. We have... Uh, oh, did you look up that guy's name from Red Dead yet? Oh, shit. Sorry, I got it, I got it, I got it. <laughs> you do that one. I'll leave the space. After that one, we had Madoka Magica. And to be fair, I think even if he doesn't have powers, I think that dude, uh, Blitz Talker or whatever, he wasn't able to fly in his show, but he came to the world and was able to fly. So I True. think. True. 
But I think they gained some level of powers. Well, yes, but that was after everybody got upgraded a little bit. No, it was before that. When they were fighting outside and shit, he was flying. Yeah. When they first met. In his world, he had a levitation device. It wasn't great at getting around, at least not as well as he was able to use it in the real world. But I don't remember that being a thing. Anyway. He came from a technologically advanced area, but they hadn't... Magic wasn't really a thing. Oh, my gosh. Anyway, uh, down the list, a little bit easily corrupt. Oh, yeah. Luffy. Luffy. Mm-hmm. My gosh, this is a little bit harder than it looks. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to find this character real quick. But, uh... uh but, yeah, Blitz, he used... Oh, technology to his bad. Who's a recent character? In Dutch. All? His name's Dutch. The guy from Red Dead. Oh. Dutch. Thanks. So write that down. That's our Meteora. Okay. Oh. Okay, who's next on the list? I think Gurren Lagan. And yeah. then we have to go with him. What's his name? It's been so long since I've seen that show. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I know the... Who you think is the main character at the beginning is Kana. Simon. Simon. Or Simon. Simon. Yeah, that's what it is. Simon from Grand Logan. All right. So. Who else? Keep looking at your list. We got to use that for reference. Uh, Notch him as we get him. Okay. So. We got it. We got that one. We got that one. Yeah. We got that one. Is it old friend? Rival of show? I don't know. Blitz. We need an equivalent of Blitz. So he's from a dark show. He's from a dark show. You know who we're picking? Think about it. I'll, I'll give you two seconds. <laughs> Goblin Slayer? Nope. No. Uh, I gave you a hint. We were just watching stuff about a bridge shows. Helsing. Oh, Alucard? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. Tell me that's not a perfect fit. He even uses guns. Uh, true, but he also is stupidly supernaturally overpowered. So were fucking other people that were picking. All right, fine. Holy shit. Okay, All right. who else? Cross him out. Who's next? All right, after that would be... Uh, we picked Rui, the mecha guy. That's Simon. Oh, yeah. So cross that one out. Yep. Uh... Okay. The not really <clears throat> good guy, not really evil, sort of the side character. The neutral, overpowered, evil. She is evil. Oh, definitely As a evil. person, she's evil. But neutral, because she doesn't give a shit one way or the other. Who's someone who just likes to fuck around? Man, this one's hard. That one is difficult. I haven't, I haven't seen any recent characters. I can't characters. say Ein's. Because no. Ainz is still a little... He still has a purpose, a goal. We need a character that doesn't really have a, a goal. super nonchalant, OP anime character. Who is evil. <laughs> Who would be a nonchalant, evil character? I can't even think of a nonchalant, evil character. I'm looking it up right now. Oh my gosh. Huh. Someone who truly just doesn't give a shit. Who would that even be? I haven't watched any anime with a character like that. Yeah, it's been a while. It's, it's usually your enemy is like. See, but this the one, evil guy is super evil, you know. Yeah, but this wouldn't be an evil character. This would be that. Well, they're evil, but. <sighs> Something you couldn't figure out the motive for. Maybe Medusa from Soul Eater. She was very much evil, but she didn't really, like, she want to take over the world. She just was doing her own thing, you know? She was an evil witch. True. Oh, my gosh. I Manipulative. That's Definitely. another way. That would be maybe. another way to describe her. She was extremely manipulative and, jo and enjoyed the shit out of it. I'm looking it up, man. <laughs> We probably should have done a little bit of research on this before we started, but still, I can't. I can't think of a single one. Yeah, I'm. I'm struggling. 
Someone said Kuritsugu from uh, Fate in the anime page that I'm looking at. I don't know. Hmm. Could we say, instead of Ainz from Overlord, his right-hand man, the fucking demon, um, what's his name with the glasses? I think he could fit. Because he's extremely, extremely manipulative. Gilgamesh. From oh. Fate Stay Night. Dude's oh. controlling the whole backstory. Yeah. For... yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I can see that. Manipulative to the core. He didn't really have a goal. He just literally participated for the fuck of it. Ooh, that's a good point, too. The king. No, I guess he gets really involved at the end. Never mind. Well, so does this one. She's the only reason that they're able to even stop the bad guy. Well, this one, the dude becomes the bad guy initially at the end. Oh. The, uh... Have you watched uh, Kekai Sensen? No, I haven't. The Blood Frontier Blockade Battlefront or whatever? Oh, the Blood Blockade Battlefront? No, yeah. I have not. Yeah, this is a, a really fun show. Um, another one said uh, Illumi Zildic from Hunter x Hunter. Oh. He's doing his own thing, extremely evil, but he's a little less, like, I don't know. He makes zombies of people, so I don't know. I think I'll go with Gilgamesh. I think we'll just put Gilgamesh in, uh, Gilgamesh in there to get that over with because we're going to spend too long on this. All right. The only ones really love... Love simulator character. Yeah, the love simulator character. <sighs> I don't play I don't, these yeah, I don't play any of these. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you ever heard of... Oh, shit. What's the game called? It's really, really popular in the States. Hold on. I have it in my library. Hold on. Uh... Oh, man. What is the name of it? It's not there. Fuck. Uh, one second. I'll find this. Store. Free to play. What are these? New items. Ooh. <laughs> hey, man. I got free shit. Let me get my free shit, okay? As Mitch decides to get distracted. Uh, store free to play. It's really popular. Why can't I think of a name of it, man? Uh, top selling. No, what's being played? Uh, da 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 da. Do da do da. Yankee Doodle, sing that song. Do da. Doki Doki Literature Club. There we go. Oh dear God. Have you heard of it? Yes. Yeah, that shit. Because that's the only, like, popular dating sim in America, but it's not really a dating sim. It's a really fucked up game. But, yeah, we should do that one. I forgot the name of the character, though. <laughs> Who's in it? <laughs> Doki Doki characters. Oh, God. Okay, so you have four options. Okay. Uh, I'm going to hell for this. <laughs> you have Monica, the club leader, who turns out to be the crazy, psychotic villain bitch at the end of it. Okay. You have Sayori, the best friend, who's, like, super friendly. Uh, Natsuki, the chick with pink hair. She's really fuck. She hates you, but she ends up treating you nice eventually. And then Yuri, which is, like, the Sundere-type character, super timid and, like, scared of you at first, but then gets really into you. So, which one are we picking? Probably the guitar, old dark-haired one, let's be honest here. God. I don't think that fit her personality, though, because she was really shy. Really, really shy. Yeah. This girl is, like, she's just a bookworm. That's her thing. So I think it'd be one of these two. It'd either be the friend or the... Let's just do Monica for the jokes. Monica? Okay, yeah. fine. I'll make you play this one day. It'll be fucking hilarious. All right. So... All right. And then we have the fighting game character that shows up. Yeah, well, the basically he'd be he'd be the antithesis to best friend. That's not no no no. So there's the JoJo character. You know what I'm talking about the one who summoned his fucking thing and yeah, fought the sword. There's two of them. Yes. Yeah. And then he has a guy come in. The Deku character is not because Celesia, her the the equivalent oh, yeah. would be Bakugo. Yeah. Which would be for the other character that comes in to get in their way. Yeah. 
So, so that'd be Bakugo. Yeah, easily. And then we didn't pick the uh, the JoJo equivalent, so it would be JoJo or Joestar, just any of them. Oh, my God. It doesn't matter. I don't know what the current one is named. I don't know any of the Joestar characters. It's just that's who it would be, so just put it down. Just put JoJo. Okay, And fine. then whoever his opponent is. What's the, the fucking the vampire dude from JoJo? Except it's not his enemy. It's more like his rival. No, he's the bad guy of the show. So JoJo's going to be the bad guy in our world. Okay. Because you remember, okay, so the dude who shows up with the stand is actually the bad guy from the anime. Yeah. And then he ends up being a good guy in the show. Yeah. And then his rival, which is his friend, but rival, who's the good guy, turns out to be a bad guy. Yeah. So, hold on. JoJo. Mind flipping sense. You get what I'm saying, though, right? Yeah. Uh, who am I looking for? Well, there's so there's Jonathan Joestar. He's the main character, of course. I'm looking for the the bad guy. I forgot Dio his name. Brando. There you go. Oh shit, he looks fucking nasty there. <laughs> look at him. Other Dio Brando. <laughs> I'm just look at. Him. Oh god. <laughs> That's Dario Brando. Looks terrible. So Dio Brando would be a good guy in this world. Wow, that's a stretch. And then Jonathan, or any of the Jonathans, I don't care which one we're picking, just say JoJo, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Okay, that's all the characters, right? Yeah. And then the military princess, but I think you leave her as she is, because there's nothing equivalent to her. There isn't any. I can't think of a single character. Right, so let me see this real quick. Okay. We're going to do... Good guy, good guy, technically bad guy. Luffy, technically bad guy. Simone, good guy. Alucard, bad guy. A lot of them turn, I know that, but we're talking initially. Yeah. Uh, neutral. Uh, Monica, good guy. Yeah. Bad guy. Good guy. Bad guy. So, let's look at the straight matchups, right? We're going to have this, because that's a fight that happens. Yeah. Dio Brando versus his equivalent. Yeah, definitely. Which is JoJo, but Dio Brando also fights Monica. Uh-huh. Because that's like her one big fight. Yeah. Uh, Gilgamesh kind of will fuck around with everybody. Alucard versus... Who does Blitz fight? Blitz? He fights uh, Meteora. So it'd be kind of a gunslinger fight. Yeah. And then... He also fights Deku. Or tries to kill Deku. I should say. And then Madoka fights Deku. Ultimately succumbs to the and story then, villain. And who does Luffy fight? Meteora? Al- Alistaria? I think so. I think she fights Meteora primarily. Yeah. But I think she also fights Deku. The equivalent. Yeah. Okay, so Simone kind of just doesn't really fight anyone one-on-one, right? He kind of just... He fights in the very last fight, but he doesn't really fight outside of that, right? Um, not, yeah, he most time is just an over-glorified, I'm going to make sure things don't get too fucking serious. Yeah. All right, so, let's look at these matchups now. <laughs> so, Deku versus Bakugo. To be fair, we haven't seen Deku beat Bakugo before. Not so I think I think fight. Bakugo would win. Yeah. Uh, Ultimately, that that's exactly what's happening in the actual anime. recreator. Yeah. She's getting her ass handed to her. Yep. Of course, she's also not exactly up for a full-on fight against somebody who's technically her friend. Yeah. That's how Deku would be, too. Yeah. Okay, and now we have Deku versus Madoka. Probably still not going to try his hardest. Would he win, though? That's the question. Would he win? I think it'd be more of a tie. Really? Or there wouldn't be really a winner. More, she'd get tired of throwing magic spells at his ass, and he'd get tired of dodging. (laughs) And they just sort of leave. <laughs> I don't know. I think Deku would kick her ass. Uh, Deku versus Luffy. That's I think Luffy wins. Yeah. Actually, because Deku just, like, Deku, isn't strong enough yet. Deku half-asses it a lot. Well, it's not that he half-asses. He's just, like, he doesn't have his full powers yet. So he's kinda, on top of the he's fact forcibly that, halving it. On top of the fact that he does not like fighting people that seem like they're good. Yeah. He just doesn't put in full effort when that happens. I mean, he puts in full effort. Think about his fight against uh, 
what's his dick? I can't think of names right now. Todoroki. He, okay. he literally tries to kick his ass to make him wake the fuck up. That's what he does. Yeah. So I think he would beat the shit out of Luffy if he could, but I just don't think he can beat Luffy. Current power Deku versus current power Luffy. Luffy wins. Oh, easily. So that's what we're relating, right? Simply like, off experience alone, Luffy yeah. would know how to take him I apart. think at some point Deku would beat the shit. Like, a Deku All Might equivalent would beat the shit out of Luffy, I think, but I think Luffy is just too good right now. Well, on top of the fact all of the experience, the fight dials down to more than just pure strength. Yeah. You got to think about each of these characters. Alucard is literally a fucking 2,000 year old vampire. I think Deku could beat Alucard, actually, though. Oh, probably. As long as you So that's the next fight, though, is the list, right? Is Deku versus Alucard. I think Deku could beat Alucard. But he probably won't off first encounter. Probably not. But they didn't fight that long in the show anyway. He kept no. coming back. Um, but I do think Deku could beat him. Like. Oh, yes. I think Deku has a physical power. Alucard tried to take out... Would try to take out the Spellcaster. Yeah, that was... That's the Dutch equivalent. Yeah. Because we couldn't think of like a... We had to think of an NPC from a game, you know... That was a leader type character. Or at least an inspiration type character. Yeah. So, then we'll go to the next one. Dutch versus Alucard. Dutch is getting his shit shoved in. (laughs) And dying. Like, Dutch just dies. What are you doing, Dutch? Uh... (laughs) Madoka maybe doesn't die because Dutch would have the support team, but he'd get fucked pretty hardcore. I mean, he's still human. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who else do we have on here? Uh, Luffy versus. I know my lines made everything a little fucked. Ooh, Gilgamesh would fuck with both. Oh, who is it? Would completely fuck with Dio. Yeah. That was one of their first interactions, right? Yeah. yeah. And then she takes his power for her own. Yeah. That's something Gilgamesh would do, too. Mm-hmm. Tell me it's not. <laughs> Dio would just get fucking obliterated. Oh. I don't care that you can regenerate or whatever. You're getting plowed by a million swords. What are you doing, bro? You're just dead. Um... All right, who else do we have? We have Super Fighter version Monica versus Dio Brando. I think Dio Brando wins because he's an OP vampire. I don't know what the hell you could do to Monica. To or actually, she fights JoJo. I'm sorry. I think Monica could beat JoJo as, like, a super fighter. Oh, yeah. But not Dio, because Dio's the vampire, like, OP shit. Yeah. It'd be a weird matchup, though. Could... It'd be a weird matchup, for sure. It's definitely not a normal matchup. <laughs> Uh, Jojo versus Dio. Jojo beats Dio every time they fight, but that's because it's an anime. Uh, Alucard fights... Who else? Dutch, we know that. Alucard is the who equivalent again? Sorry, Blitz. Blitz. I think Blitz only fights those two. Yeah, and he has a recurring... He would recurringly fight Jojo because they'd get a beef with each other. That's true. Forgot about that. Yeah. I don't know. Okay, I'm kind of done with this subject. I'm yeah, sorry. We, we kind of got burnt out pretty quick on that. It's just that it's hard to write that out, especially because, yeah. one, even the characters that we found that were similar aren't exactly like them. They'd have different reactions. Yeah. I think Gilgamesh would still shit on everyone in this, though. He would he would ultimately side with the bad guy no matter For what. For sure, but what. he'd still shit on everyone. Oh, yeah. Think of everyone we have on that list. Who stands a chance? Alucard stands a slight chance. Deku stands maybe a slight chance because of his speed. Yeah. But everyone else, I think, is just getting their shit plowed. The only other person I can even think of that would even have a slight chance would probably be... Bakugo? Uh, Monica. I honestly... Only because her final form. Honestly have not watched enough Madoka Magica to know, so I can't... My sister fucking made me sit down and watch the whole goddamn show. I've heard it was really good, I just yeah, haven't watched very it. very good. Her, her final form would be a good matchup for Gilgamesh. Yeah. But Gilgamesh also just doesn't give a fuck and would probably just walk away halfway through the fight. Yeah. So let's kind of take a change of pace. This is an anime podcast. We try to stick on subject a lot of the time, but let's just kind of chat, man. What's new and great in anime for you? What have you been watching? What have you been doing? Are, you told me you finished Bungo Stray Dogs, and I'm glad you like that. Oh, I had too much fun with that one. I think it was like a very stereotypical show. You kind of knew how a lot of the stuff was going to go, but it was just a fun time. And I still stand by, I think, like, the opening to season two was, like, phenomenal. That could have been its own show, and I would have watched it. I would have watched that ten times before I watched the original, but, like, 
Yeah. That, it was so good. I will admit, first season was really slow, and you didn't quite know if any of the previous episodes had anything to do with the one before that. Yeah, it was very episodic, I gotcha. Yeah. But then you got into second season with the three-way war. That was awesome. It was a lot of fun, dude. Like, that show was just a lot of fun. God. Um, for anyone who hasn't watched Bungo Stray Dogs, it's like people have supernatural powers, and then there's a supernatural agency that tries to, like, bring them in and help harbor them. Or you can go join the Port Mafia, which is the bad guys. And then we randomly meet a third party, which are, like, the American equivalent of the super-powered people. And, like, it's just fun. It's just a fun power about people with powers. And yeah. You just It's just a fun time. It's a good show. The story's pretty okay. I still, like, if I could, like, isolate the first six episodes of season two, that would be, like, a phenomenal show. I think that's sh- amazing story, good character progression, everything you wanted. <laughs> And then it was like this weird time jump, but it was cool to learn about the characters, and it was just a fun show. Yeah. Um, what else have you watched recently? Uh, recently, recently, recently. Uh, other than the four main shows that we've been following, yeah, not much. I mean, uh, been watching uh, the new season of Sword Art Online. How's that going? Uh, as of last week's episode, the Kirito and Yuji O are currently in prison. Nice. And about to get into a fight with, think of the special ops forces of that world. <laughs> Sounds like a blast. Yeah, I'm I'm enjoying it. You think SAO, Alicization or whatever, has done justice to the SAO, like done better than the prior series? Easily. Okay. Easily. I'll have to give it a shot eventually. I've got so much shit on my plate right now. It, dude, it is. I've been working through Railgun still. I've slowed down a lot. Because I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm on certain magical index. I slowed down. This week's just been crazy busy for me, prepping for the holidays and everything. But yeah, I've had a lot of fun with that show. It's just been a fun, like, interesting world to learn about, and, like cool powers and all that shit. So it's it's a good time. Oh yeah. Um, what else? Uh, uh, well, let's just let's talk about the ones that we know right now. Okay. Like, we haven't seen an episode of Slime since our new podcast. Because our last one we did on Sunday, and we watched the slime before that. We talked about it. Yeah. Um. But since then, we've had a new episode of Goblin Slayer, and we've had a new episode of Bunny Girl Senpai. Uh-huh. So let's break them down in that order. Goblin Slayer, fucking awesome. Super hype. A lot of fun, <laughs> dude. If you guys haven't seen it yet, again, I, I try not to give too many spoilers here, especially for, like, the current series. Oh, yeah. I, I, if it's something's been out for a year or two, fuck it. You know, we'll talk about yeah. it. But, like, Goblin Slayer's been a lot of fun. Uh-huh. Really fun fight scene, really hype shit. You know shit's about to go down next episode, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I still look like I've been enjoying Goblin Slayer. Right? Oh, Outside yeah. of the recap episode, it was it's been a lot of fun watching this show, and I'm glad I got into it. Ten point five is a cancer. Yeah, <laughs> it honestly just feels like a D and D adventure. It really does. Like uh-huh. this sounds like some shit you would do, and like I would love to do something like that. Like fight a fucking army of goblins. That's all I'm gonna say. You know, and then, oh, like shit. have all these strategies and tactics you guys work out with like NPCs you guys meet along the way. That would just be fun. You know. Uh-huh. Um, you got anything else to say? I don't know. Goblin Slayer's been fun this week. It was a fun episode. I don't know how, how much I can say without ruining it. Yeah. Because, I mean, there is so much to unpack in that episode. But I don't want to spoil it. We're still seeing a lot of progression out of Goblin Slayer, though. For oh, sure. like, easily. He's, like, actually, like, communicating with people now and shit. And, like, He's I becoming a human being. A human. A human? Yeah, but <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. Uh, we're going to spoil the shit out of Bunny Girl Senpai, though. Cause oh, Still my favorite show of the season. I fucking love this shit. I knew it was going to happen going into the episode. I knew it. And, of course, Kaede got her memories back. Her old memories. Yeah. So she lost her new memories. All of them. Which is fucking wild. Yeah. So I'm wondering if there's going to be something in, like, the next episode. Because there's only one episode left. Yeah. I wonder if, like, next episode they're going to find some way to, like, really fix it to where she keeps both sets of memories. I'm assuming that's what's going to happen. There would be no growth of her character if they couldn't find a way. Yeah. Because she'd basically go back to what she was before the problem started. Yeah. And she has a new voice and everything. You notice that? Yeah. You catch that? Yeah, she has a new voice actor now, and it's it's interesting. And I'm curious to see how this is going to happen. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, Kaede's back-ish. I guess we like never knew original Kaede, no, to be so fair. As far as we're concerned, the us as the viewers, the Kaede we knew is gone. We don't know where she went, somewhere into the recesses of current Kaede's mind, I'm guessing. Yeah. Locked behind a little bit. So I wonder if old Kaede is still scarred. You know what I mean? I'm assuming that's a part of it, and what's going to happen in this next episode is that it's just going to be the adventure of them trying to find a way for, like, 
old Kaede to get over being scarred, and then she'll get her old memories back, or her new memories. New-ish. You, you get what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah I yeah, hear it. It's, it's a little complicated, because the whole show's a little complicated to follow, but I think that's what's going to happen, is, like, they're going to go around, and she's going to meet her old friend or whatever, and then maybe meet up with some of them old people, and, like, yeah. get past that, and then get her memories back, and then everything will go back to, like, a Something medium. that I didn't realize that happened, that they didn't really explain, the the process of which they went along discovering adolescent syndrome well it turns out everything happened to his sister first yeah then his incident happened yeah where he ended up waking up in the middle of the night bloody as shit yep i'm wondering if once he gets his sister's memories back if his scar goes away that like might. both sets because i think what happened to him has to do with his sister because he beat himself up over it does that make sense yeah so i think his scar might go away at the end of the season you mean like he might finally be able to forgive himself? Yeah. I think that's a big part of it. Because his I, whole thing happened after she was hospitalized. Uh, true. So I'm really curious. I think that might be a possibility. Because we still haven't learned anything about his. Because everyone else is like, oh, this happened. You know? Yeah. For him, it's just like, I woke up. I don't know. So I really think his is like getting over the fact that it wasn't his fault that that stuff happened to his sister. Yeah. Does it? Have you thought about that? Does that I sense? have been thinking about that, but at the same time, I'm like, that sounds like something they'll try to unpack in season two. We'll see if they I get just, a season two. I think they might end this season or something with like the scar disappearing, and then like season two we learn more about it. I think that's what would happen, probably. But also, everything seems to be centered around their friend group currently. All the adolescent syndrome problems. Yeah. So. I'm starting to wonder if there isn't an outside force that still related to the group that we haven't seen yet. Yeah. That's actually causing this supernatural occurrence. I don't think so. I think it all started with Kaede. And it's like uh, Monogatsuri or like once you've been introduced to like the supernatural world, you're more likely to be around those events. So I think that's what's happening to them. Oh, okay. That's what I think. But, you know, we might... I don't think it's going to go as extreme as, like, there's a person causing no, all of this. No, I don't you know? mean like that, but, yeah, I don't know how to explain it. You gotta watch more Baki Monogatari. You gotta watch Kizu Monogatari, the, the movies. They're three, like, hour and a half long movies, and they're hard as fuck to follow, because you watch some of the show, and you know how they always flash shit on the screen? It's like that, but it's, it's good. I enjoy the hell out of it. <laughs> um... We started Chika today. That's another thing that Chica happened. Chika Coffin Princess. Which we had a lot of questions, and happily, in the first like two episodes, they answered some of them. Some of them, enough of them to keep. And I, I, like I said, I, I connected the dots, but a little too late. Like they said it, but I think if I had actually like paid more attention, because I'm, I'm really tired. You're tired. Yeah. But I think if I was paying more attention, I would have been able to connect the dots about Chika being the, the previous king's daughter. Yeah, because they said something when the I don't know their names yet. The uh, Gillette dude. When he showed up to ask uh, the guy for the the hand back or whatever, he even said, like, can I get your, uh, oh, what was the term he used? I don't remember. But, like, can I get the item you got from the fight against the Gaz Empire? And I even said it, like, when we first met Chika, she was like, Chika, get, and then, like, stopped and gave a different last name. Yeah. So I was like, oh, watch her have a different last name. And if I had followed that, I would have put it together. But yeah. it was pretty obvious. I don't know. It's a fun show so far. I still have a bunch of questions, but... I'm enjoying it. The choreography is all right. Uh -huh. Animation style is all right. The only thing that bugs me is like Chika's eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> like they're weird. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, no. Like she just has like these really deep black eyebrows, but white hair, and then like the eye, even like the eye, like the eyelashes and stuff, are, like super black and thick. And I don't know why they did that. It's just a weird design choice. Yeah. Outside of that, though, the show's been fun. We laughed a lot watching it. We've only watched what two, three episodes, maybe two episodes. And I've been having fun. I think we'll watch some more next time you're over, and we'll. Kind of pump through that slowly but surely. Yeah. Uh, you got anything else, man? Uh, we still have to talk about our favorite anime world to live in. I want to do that as a proper episode. Because I think we could actually fill like three hours discussing and breaking down these worlds if Chris would ever show the fuck up. He probably will next week. You think? Really? Genuinely? If, no. If I go into his house and grab him, he will. Just saying, man. But, uh... I don't know. I feel bad because we promised you guys like a full-ish length episode. We're only at 50 minutes, man. We're trying to pump out. I, I'm running out of stuff pretty quick. A lot of rapid-fire discussion going on here. Well, 
Yeah. And how do I even put this? A lot of this stuff, no matter how much we try to slow it down, there isn't really enough material without ruining a whole bunch of shit. Well, yeah, we just didn't want to go into, like, spoilers for some of the shows we've been talking about. But even for, like, the first part where we were talking about, like, our fantasy world fights, I just can't think of, like, I don't know, maybe I'm just not educated enough to come up with, like, really good fights and stuff. And, like, some of them I just feel like are so over the top you can't even begin to break them down, you know? So it's like, who do you even choose? Who could you even pick? It's like, yeah, Saitama, Goku, fuck everyone else on that list because they're really not that strong. (laughs) You think, like, who else can, like, end worlds and universes, you See, know? but there was only one character like that in all of Recreators, and she wasn't even a main character. Well, she was a main character, but she wasn't She wasn't a main character that everybody and their mother knew. Yeah. She was a random-ass character on a freaking forum board. Yeah, it's like a deviant art equivalent. But I'm just saying, yeah. she wasn't even strong enough to like end worlds. Technically, she gained more powers as it went, sure, but it wasn't to the degree. I still think Goku and Saitama would beat the ever living shit out of her. Just True. saying, she had a shit. And then, like, who armor. else do you have? Think of all the anime you've ever watched. You know, like who else is disgustingly overpowered? Oh, what was his name? Uh. Blood Lad is pretty fucking overpowered, but he's almost a spoof character. Yeah, he's kind of too spoofy. At least One Punch Man, he's like somewhat. I don't know, like, yes, One Punch Man is a spoof, but he's not quite to that degree. No. Um, Gilgamesh is cool, but he's still getting his ass kicked by the two we just named. Like, who yeah. else has world ending capabilities, you know? <laughs> Let me look at my anime list right now. I couldn't even. I can't even think of someone off the top of my head. Who's a world-ending character? Yeah. Uh. Let's do score because I probably have like some OP shit off the top. Nope, nope. Oh, there you go. Uh, what's his name? Fuck. Uh. Oh yeah. Uh. Uh, Koro Sensei Koro from Sensei. Assassination Classroom. Yeah. He could fuck with him. Yeah. He could. He could fuck with it. He actually blew up half the moon. I can see it. Okay. I'll give him that one. Yeah. I'll throw him in there. Uh, who else? I'm scrolling through a lot of shit. Scrolling through actually, a lot of shit. Actually, there is one. Well, no. That doesn't. From, I would say uh, Dazai from Bungo Stray Dogs because his ability is literally to nullify everybody else's ability. Yeah, but that doesn't. One Punch Man's, as far as we can tell, just simply comes from. Natural strength, not an actual power. Yeah, and Goku's yeah. is. Strength, yeah, not a power per se, yeah. yeah. Well, his later forms are, but his standard form isn't, yeah. His standard form is just no one in Hunter x Hunter is actually to that degree. Not they're strong people, but no one to that degree. Um, maybe someone from K, maybe the the silver kings, the silver king, yeah, maybe the silver king because he can affect like space and time and shit, yeah, that is, but that's really it. Uh, who else? Magi. No one in Magi is that strong. Uh, in, oh, in oh, in Ma- oh yeah, in Magi. Um, no one's that strong. Not world-ending strong. Not straight out of the box. No. Uh, Noragami. They're all technically gods, but I don't know if they're like that world-ending power. I think that hasn't been like discovered enough. Even with as much as I've read of the manga, it's not like that extreme. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe someone from Noragami though. Yeah. Uh, recreators, no one from there honestly can do it. Not just. Overlord isn't strong enough. Uh, What's your dick from Blood Plus isn't strong enough. No. Uh, Elfin Lee? The main Elfin Lied? No. Yeah. She's not world ending strong. <laughs> Maybe if you take the ultimate mech from Gurren Lagan. Yeah, the final one. The that final, takes final them one, yeah. Literally converting a ship the size of the fucking moon into a damn Gundam. Yeah, but I don't see them fighting Goku or Saitama because they're just too small and agile, you know what I mean? Like, it's different when you're fighting big shit with big shit, but when you're... They were standing on top of a fucking galaxy at the end. I don't think Goku's fast enough to dodge that just quite yet. I think Saitama could fuck with that, though. Real talk? Yeah. Because I'm not going to go into too many details of what I've read, but Saitama could fuck with that. But you got a point. But yeah, the final mech from Gurren Lagann. But they're literally like galaxies. Size. They're fighting galaxies with galaxies. Uh-huh. Like some super extreme shit. And that's an extreme example, you know? Yeah. 
I mean, at that point, we finally get something stupidly overpowered. But yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm not seeing or thinking of anything. Uh, the final form in Kill a Kill when she absorbs everybody nope. else's powers have nope. a chance for about three seconds. Um, it's just you have to think about the scale of these shows, right? Yeah. Like Dragon Ball, you're talking about universe level fighters versus universe level fighters. And One Punch Man, he's fighting gods, you know. And uh, Gurren Lagann, they're fighting with galaxies for the universe and shit. Like, very extreme cases. None of these other shows have gone to that extreme, so you can't realistically depict these people beating these people. That's all I'm saying. Naruto would be a moonbreaker in his final fucking form, but that's about as far as he's gotten in the show. Yeah, I'm not seeing or thinking of anyone who could even, like, really put up a fight here. Not off the top of my head and even looking through this list i can't think of anybody maybe bell from belzebub because he's actually like the devil i don't know if you've ever watched it but like that's an extreme case i don't even think because i think goku actually fights someone from hell and kicks his ass he does but i don't think he actually ends up fighting him i don't remember i don't know i'm kind of i'm kind of shot for ideas here I can't think of a single one. Unlimited Blade Works? Nope. No, nobody's world ending there. See, that's the problem. We're trying to find another fighter that's world ending. I, I know. And there's not many. I know. <laughs> that's why, like, uh, you can't realistically compare people of that caliber to anyone else. I don't you know. know. I don't know. Exorcist, uh, technically, together, the brothers could be world ending, but. We that's an extreme case. Like, yeah. you're taking the extreme ends of their abilities, you know? Yeah. That's Campione? Okay. So this is about a guy who gains the powers of a god to fight other gods. So maybe. Maybe him. But he's ugh, he's a pushover. Yeah. Yeah, I can't think of anyone. I'm never watching that show ever again. Why not? Those three were garbage. You mean these four? Did we watch four? Oh, God, we did watch four. Ske- Skelter in Heaven. I sort of blacked them out. Uh, Destruction of Mars or whatever. Uh, Pupa and Bryce and Will Monogathry, Garze's Wing. Yeah, no. Yeah, I can't think of anyone who would be on that degree. So I think if you were to ever have like a true discussion about like who would win in a fight, you'd have to break it down a level to be able to bring in people like Ichigo and Naruto and like, you know. That's why I said mid-tier fighters because really the only the only high-tier fighters are Goku and Saitama. Yeah, who literally fight gods for shits and giggles. Like, I don't... I'm sure there's other shows out there that feature, like, god-level fighting, but I don't think, you know... I can't think of any outside of Noragami, which, again, we haven't seen them do any world-ending type shit. And yeah. I don't think the gods can affect stuff that heavily. I think maybe Don Machi, maybe their gods, because we haven't seen their gods release their full powers. We had uh, Hestia almost release her powers and fuck some shit up. Yeah. And I'm sure Zeus could fuck some shit up, but that's really... Yeah. As much as I can think right now. Uh, we have even in the books we haven't seen the gods really release their power. Yeah, I haven't read the books and I'm I want to though. Dude, One I'm, day. I'm on book ten of the light novel series. How far past the anime is that? At least a good two years. Well, I'm saying book wise. How many books were in the anime? How many were first in the... five cover the anime. Okay. So that you're like a whole season ahead. Easily. Dick. Well, no. One of the books could easily be a season. Yeah, but they did the first five in one season. Yeah, the first five books are the smallest of the entire series, though. Gotcha. (laughs) Maybe one day we'll get another one of those. I'm hoping. I hear that there is plans for one in the works, but they don't know when they'll release it or when they'll even start casting. Awesome. Yeah. Really disappointed in that. All right, man. Well, we're kind of coming to the end of it. I think we're kind of... We're just on the back end of it, yeah. For this. I mean, it's just like two people's cool. We can do our thing, you know. Maybe when we can, you know, break down more stuff. I think the episodes are just gonna be shorter in general when it's me and you. Yeah. But when we have three people to actively discuss many things and go on tangents, that's it's a little easier. And plus, each of us comes shows from a different perspective, and some yeah. of us notice something the other didn't. Yeah, and then we get into a huge discussion off of it. And yeah. Chris always has some controversial shit to say, and so do you. So it's easier to bounce shit off of you too. Well. Three people is easier to make a conversation than two. Yeah, that's just kind of how it goes. I'm not upset by it or anything, but uh, thank you guys for joining us for episode eight. Uh, I don't know. Be sure to email us if you have any shows you want us to watch. Be sure to check us out on YouTube, Spotify, 
Twitch, all that good stuff. Links will be in the description, up and or above, below. I don't know where it's at on what you're watching. But uh, thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, you're doing another sign-out today, buddy. Go I'm for doing it. the sign-out today? Yeah. All right. We doing another episode tomorrow? Are you coming over? I plan to if we're doing something. How long are you going to be over? I'll probably be over just long enough for us to do an episode on shit anime again. You going to do shit anime? We'll do another shit anime. All right, we'll have to find one, but we can do it. All right. How long is that, though? How many hours are you thinking? Three hours. Okay, we can make something happen. So we'll have another short episode tomorrow. Hopefully next week we got a full-length episode for you guys. If not, I'm sorry. But we just crested over an hour. Sign off, Andrew. All right, everybody. It's been fun. See you guys tomorrow for our short episode. Take it's care. It's kind of lame. You'll get better eventually. It's I okay. Peace out.